Imagine being strapped into a big chunk of metal, raised over 120 meters into the sky, and then dropped, whizzing over hills and even looping upside down. When you put it that way, roller coasters can seem a little terrifying, but they're also exhilarating and involve some really interesting physics to make all those speedy, gut-dropping thrills work. Most roller coasters start off with something called a lift hill, which mechanically lifts you to the top of the first and tallest hill. But other roller coasters start a little more suddenly. They're rapidly propelled forward thanks to hydraulics, the branch of physics that deals with fluids and how different mechanical forces affect them. Hydraulic launch systems work by using a cable that's attached to two important pieces. A catch car, which connects to the bottom of the roller coaster train, and a giant winch, which is basically a huge spool that winds the cable when it's turned by some motors. So to launch the train, this cable pulls it down the tracks, like reeling in a fish, really fast. After a few seconds, the catch car releases the train so it can zoom up the big hill. It's kind of a complex mechanism, but we'll go over the basics. A hydraulic fluid and some nitrogen gas are separated by a piston inside this chamber called a hydraulic accumulator. And the key to these launch systems is the fact that liquids, like hydraulic fluid, are incompressible. So the hydraulic fluid is pumped into the accumulator and compresses the nitrogen gas, so there's more gas molecules bouncing around in a smaller space, which increases the pressure. Nitrogen gas is cheap, easy to get, and won't react dangerously to heat and high pressure. Basically, no huge explosions. And once the pressure is high enough, a valve is opened and the hydraulic fluid rushes out to power a bunch of motors, which turn the winch, which pulls the cable, and accelerates the train. Just like that, within a couple seconds, you're speeding along at hundreds of kilometers per hour. So now that the ride started, you've made it to the top of the first hill, and you start to head over the other side, you might feel something weird. Like besides the adrenaline or other chemicals that give you that exciting rush, there's that sinking feeling in your stomach, and you might feel weightless. That's because you're in free fall meaning that gravity is the only force acting on your body. Normally throughout the day you're able to feel your weight because something like the ground or a chair is pushing back on your body, from your feet to your bones and organs. But when you're in free fall, you're not being supported by anything, so there isn't a force pushing upward on you. You're just accelerating toward the earth at 9.8 meters per second squared like any other falling object. Now all good or slightly terrifying things have to come to an end, so the roller coaster train needs to stop somehow. Traditionally, roller coasters use brakes that come in contact with a speeding train, like something that skids along the bottom or clamps that around metal fins on the cars. These brakes rely on friction, which causes the kinetic energy, the energy of motion, to be converted into heat energy and stops the train. And these brakes work, but they get worn out from all this contact. But there are some brakes that don't involve friction. They work by moving a conductor, like the metal fins sticking out from the train, through a magnetic field. A magnetic field can be produced by electric currents, like the currents running through a wire, or the microscopic currents formed by electrons moving within atoms, which is kind of how permanent magnets work. So on the tracks of some roller coasters, there are rows of permanent magnets that create a magnetic field. And when the metal fins pass through the magnetic field, it induces a ring-like current called an eddy current. This has to do with Lentz's law, which essentially tells us that conductors, like these metal fins, don't like change. So when the fins enter a magnetic field that wasn't there before, they'll create a current that makes its own magnetic field that opposes this change. The train will slow down because the kinetic energy of the moving train is dissipated as heat by the eddy currents flowing through the metal. And eventually, the train comes to a stop all without friction. So whether you love them or hate them, hopefully knowing some of the physics behind roller coasters can make you appreciate them a little more. Thank you for watching this episode of SciShow, brought to you by our patrons on Patreon. If you want to help support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash scishow, and don't forget to go to youtube.com slash scishow and subscribe. If I move my hand closer to this antenna, the pitch will go up, and over here, closer and farther away from this one, I can control the volume. It's like magic.